We will now run through a diff strip procedure for a flight from Dublin to London Heathrow. On arrival at the aircraft, you may need to turn up the brightness on the FMGC. And in this case, the MACDO menu is displayed. Select FMGC, and now you are brought to the data page. So to start the DISRIP, starting with the data, check the aircraft status, and ensure that the correct database is in date for today, which is the 7th of September. In this case, I need to change the database by selecting the key 3 left. Now the active NAV database is correct for the 7th of September. Onto the init or I, and here we will insert the company route between Dublin and Heathrow. When we do this, you will see options available. Not every route has different options, but Dublin Heathrow has three different options available to the crew, which is indicated by one slash three up here. This is route number one. The right arrow brings you to route number two. And there is route number three. Today, I check the flight plan and it says that we will be flying to Heathrow via Liffey, Upper Lima 975, Wallasey, Upper Yankee 53, Nuba, and then into Heathrow. We'll also get a little note down here to align the IRS. I'll clear that at the moment, and I'll insert today's flight plan. The company route is now inserted, and we move to the rest of the init page. Here, the easiest way to do this is to move from the top left down and come up to the align. So we'll insert the alternate, which is Gatwick. There is no company flight plan between Heathrow and Gatwick, so it will display none. I'll return, and now we have Gatwick nominated as our alternate. The flight number for today checked off the flight plan, and this is always the same as the call sign, is Echo India November 152. Course index for today's flight is 11, checked off the front page of the flight plan, and the cruise level will be 330. Please note that the temperature at altitude defaults to ISA, which is minus 50 degrees. Now we're moving up to the Align IRS position. In this case, we need to check the IRS position of the LIDO chart. We usually do this together once both flight crew members are in the cockpit, but it is acceptable to check this position if the captain is not available for a period of time. Align and remember to come back to confirm this position later on at a different stage. So that's the D for Delta, I, India, moving on to the flight plan as we continue through the diff strip. Today, checking the ATIS, we're departing off runway 28 in Dublin, so I'll select departure, runway 28, and it will be a Liffey 5 Alpha. We've now pre-selected runway 28, Liffey 5 Alpha, no transition, OK to insert. Now we have the departure. I'll move immediately to the arrival. Check the ADIS in Heathrow. They're indicating an arrival. On to runway 27 left. Our flight plan brings us via Bovington. So it will be the Bovington 1 Bravo. And you can see it has ILS 27 left via Bovington. The arrival is the Bovington 1 Bravo and no transition. I will now insert that. Now we have the full flight plan from Dublin 28 to Heathrow 27 left. Diff's RIP brings you to the secondary flight plan now. At this stage, there are some different options. One option here you can do is copy the active, line select one left, and insert new destination, which in this case will be return to Dublin. And now I will select the ILS onto runway 28 as it is the approach in use today. So now we've selected the ILS runway 28, no via. I'm going to the secondary again and now populate the performance page. Insert today's weather 1013. And I'll go to the next phase and confirm that these altitudes are correct. In this case, the thrust reduction acceleration should be 1750. 
as per the SOP, you may default the acceleration to the missed approach altitude if so desired, and the engine out acceleration altitude should be 1750. So now we've completed the Delta, India, Foxtrot, Sierra part of the diff strip, moving on to the RATNAV page. The Liffey 5 Alpha uses the Dublin V War and a course of 099. And down here for the departure, while they still exist, we will put in the Oscar Echo and check the frequency is 316 and select. My preference is to leave this VOR for this particular departure empty and it will auto tune at a later stage. So that is the Delta India Fox Sierra Romeo. Now I'm moving to the second init page. So I go to init and right arrow brings you to the zero fuel weight CG and zero fuel weight. The route reserve is 5%. This particular flight, it's okay. So on a 320, uh, zero fuel weight CG that is appropriate as an average is three zero and zero fuel weight actual. Check off the flight plan. In this case, it's 56 tons. I will insert that. And at this moment, I'm going to pause before putting in the block fuel. I'll show you why in a moment. So that's the diffs rip to the P progress page. We will put in the return runway into the bearing and distance key, which is four right. And you can note that we have low no nav accuracy at the moment. Nothing else to check here at this time. The performance page, until the load sheet comes in and we've worked out our performance, we will be unable to insert the V speeds, but we can ensure that the thrust reduction and the acceleration are correct. And the engine out acceleration is also correct. At this stage, we do not put in flaps for departure or any other information on this page. On a short flight, it will be prudent now to continue through the next phase. And at this stage, put in your descent speed, which should default to 280 knots into the descent phase. Also for a short flight, it is appropriate and indeed desired that we put in the performance expected on arrival. And you may even insert the DH or MDA into the MDA window if you know what that is. So the next phase, I'll just check the missed approach. Thrust reduction acceleration looks okay. I'm going to put in the engine out acceleration as 1580. And in Heathrow, the missed approach on 27F goes to 2000 feet. So I'm just going to put that initially in as the acceleration altitude. Now we have a note here saying GPS primary. So I'm going to clear that. You can double check by going to the progress page and it says nav accuracy high, GPS primary. So, so far we have now put in the data, the init, flight plan, secondary, secondary performance, RADNAV, auto tuning, manually and Oscar Echo, progress, Dublin 28, and performance standing by in the load sheet figures. Now, in order to calculate the winds accurately, if this aircraft just arrived in on a previous departure, select any vertical revision on the right hand side and it will open a vertical revision page, select wind, select history wind and if there is a wind saved from the previous flight it will be here this will give you the option to insert these winds into the flight plan there are no winds saved so i'll go back to flight plan and in this case i'm going to do a vertical revision go to wind and i will put in one wind off the flight plan into the climb wind window and then i will move to the next phase and check the winds en route. So off the flight plan, I move to the top of climb 
window. In this case, let's say Wallacy. And I'll say 250. This is the cruise wind expected at Beam Wallacy. We'll also check the temperature of the flight plan and we can put in an accurate temperature of minus 52 at 330. Such a short flight only really requires a descent wind now. So we'll put in the descent wind, again, taking off the flight plan. And my preference here is to put another mid descent wind at a lower altitude. And you can see because we've already filled out the performance page for arrival that the box knows the wind on the ground. Checking the wind for the departure and the alternate indicates a wind of 25015 to Gatwick. So now that is also plugged in. This is the most effective way and accurate way to work out your fuel figures and your times en route. It's quite important that this is the way you insert the winds when you're flying on the Tango 9, Tango 16, any of those MMPS routings. Okay, finally, we'll put in the expected fuel. So today, the block fuel to Heathrow is seven tons. And now, because we have the winds in, the box will calculate accurate estimates and times en route to Heathrow. For forward planning purposes, we very often will hold in Heathrow. So now on the ground, if time is available, it would be appropriate to insert the hold at Bobbington. Hold. Check the inbound course, turn, time, or distance, and insert. This means you have one less thing to do on arrival into Heathrow later on, and the aircraft will indicate Bobbington, hold, right turn. And that is how you complete the dips.